So let's talk about like the current events that are happening in the adult industry. Um, there, so <clears throat> for those of you who um, don't know, and I've talked about this so many times on my show, there was the Me Too movement, obviously, that we all know about a few years ago. And then during COVID, there was kind of like a second Me Too wave that happened within the adult industry, where a lot of women felt empowered to come forward about abuse that they had um, suffered at the hands of directors or other performers. I think that the popularity of platforms such as OnlyFans, which made people financially independent, made people safe, feel safe. Helped that them they quite a bit could to speak be able out to because say they didn't something. they didn't weren't so concerned about being blacklisted. We had kind of like a third wave happen. Um, last week, Leah Gotti um, put out a Twitter thread and you know basically said like talked about some of the issues she'd had and then invited people to speak about their own or to DM her privately and she would speak for them. People are calling it the list. The list. <laughs> the list. Yes. So what was your reaction to that? Because I know that she got mixed feedback, which has been very stressful for her. My first reaction was worry, of yeah. course. I'd, just anybody that is going about it in that way, which I don't think it's the wrong way. I'm not someone to judge that, but in a way where it can just be so scrutinized publicly, um, I was worried. I yeah. was very worried for her, first of all. Uh, another reaction that I had was I was really grateful that women were speaking out in general, keeping me safe, other performers safe from coming into those same situations where we might not be aware that we need to be extra careful or mm -hmm. we might not be aware that we just don't even need to be there at all. Mm -hmm. um, I was absolutely very grateful to my fellow performers for not only speaking up for themselves and being very brave, but like that helped me quite a bit. Mm -hmm. There's a, there are several people on there that I'd heard things about, but I didn't know the extent yeah. and to be, Same. yeah. And to be able to fully understand that is, like a gift it's a huge huge gift that i you know that's making a big difference mm -hmm. that's how i think it's making the biggest difference because directors blah 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 they might not be listening but for me huge huge difference in the ability to understand like who i'm working with mm -hmm. on a deeper level yeah um and also i wish there was a better platform for these women to be able to speak out because another reaction that I had was I worry about how it makes our industry look. Mm -hmm. In one of those ways we were talking, you were just talking about, uh, there was a few lawsuits from like individuals that think porn should not be a thing mm -hmm. anymore. And they pulled things from online to use in those lawsuits as evidence. And I do worry that things like this, which are women that are just trying to have a platform and a voice to be able to say, what has happened to them since mm -hmm. they don't have the proper one they're putting themselves at risk of being used as one of those examples yeah. in one of those lawsuits yeah it's such a complicated conversation to have because mm -hmm. it's like yes you know the adult industry is like any other workforce right there's like there's workplace safety issues yes and there's um people who take advantage of other people and there's abuse but when it's the adult industry, these organizations such as like Exodus Cry and COSI, you know, really use this as fodder to further their agenda against the adult industry as a whole. They take... Which is not what it's meant for. Which is not what it's meant for. Like, there's the do there's that, doctors who, um, I don't mean to say something terrible, but there's doctors who rape women yeah. when they're doing surgery. That happens. Yeah. There are bad people within our industry as well. Yeah. It just, it. I understand that it varies like morally for some people, but just because we're doing sex work doesn't mean that there isn't going to be good and bad. Right. Like there is of course good and bad. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard because it's like they really, you know, take these little moments and they use it to, you know, push their agenda that the adult industry is full of abuse and, you know, women are being victimized on a regular basis, but it's like, no, yes, yes and no. Like this happens, obviously. It doesn't happen all the time, of course, because a lot of these women that we're speaking up are active in the adult industry. I've had them on this podcast. They love their job, but also, you know, they want to speak out about, you know, 
bad situations that they've encountered so that other women can be warned as well. That's the purpose. And they can know. And then also, you know, to push these kind of predatory people out of the industry to make it a safer place for everyone to work in. For sexual exploration, for right. everything in general. Yeah. yeah. So it's so complicated because it's like, how do you achieve that objective? Like, how do you, you know, how do you make the adult industry a safer place to be by allowing and encouraging these kinds of open conversations without yeah. outside entities coming in and using it for their own, you know, nefarious purposes. I think it's extremely unfortunate, to be honest, because it is just another way that they dehumanize us. Yeah. Because we should be allowed to say, hey, things aren't great. Things aren't going well. We, mm -hmm. you should not be working with this individual and it's, you're not going to have a good time if you do. We should be allowed to say that without being scrutinized as a whole. Right. If someone says a hospital isn't doing great, we don't all of a sudden say, all hospitals, we're done. Yeah. We're done with them all. It's just not a thing that happens. So it is another way that they dehumanize us. And it's really unfortunate that we even have to be having this conversation about it having like this dual thing that can happen mm -hmm. it is the juxtaposition of two different totally different things that can happen which is a woman feeling empowered and doing something that is helpful for her fellow co-worker mm -hmm. versus her saying something that could be used against us that shouldn't even be mm -hmm. a conversation at all yeah it's it's it it's very dehumanizing yeah it's and it's and it's so complicated too i mean you know i can kind of cite the the recent episode that I did with Jesse Rogers, you know, who had a bad experience in the adult industry, left the adult industry, spoke out against the adult industry, you know, definitely had some of these anti-porn organizations use her story and use her okay. to speak out against the industry. She left. She grew up. She changed as a person. It's been 10 years. Um, the adult industry, I want to say, like, I think almost most importantly, the adult industry has changed mm -hmm. dramatically since then in the last 10 years with, you know, these personal content platforms where girls can make their own money, um, with the changes in the way that a lot of brands do uh, business, um, the boundary checklists. Yeah. All of that came from that second Me Too wave that I was talking about during COVID. I witnessed it firsthand yeah. working for MindGeek, you know, when all of these people were talking about directors and situations that, you know, they came across, like the executives at MindGeek were like, okay, we need to, like, talk about this. We need to make sure that we're – creating a safe environment for these people to work in. We need to suss out some of these problematic people. I mean, there were directors who got fired. Yeah. Because Which are all incredible stories. things. That right. These are all good things that happened at, out of, you know, unfortunate circumstances, but it really moved the needle forward, I think, in making the adult industry a safer place for people. And now we have these boundary checklists and now we have like a lot of accountability. We have talent liaisons on set that are there specifically for the models. Like all of this wouldn't have happened if people hadn't spoken out exactly. about what they were experiencing. And so when Jesse came on to my show, you know, I saw a lot of people saying like, oh my God, why is she back in the adult industry? She spoke out about the adult industry. She said all of these negative things, like you shouldn't interview her. She shouldn't come back. Like she should be banned forever. And I was like, she's allowed to have her experience. She's allowed to speak. I mean, one of her biggest issues that really like, I felt very upset about was that she did try to talk to people about her, the bad experiences that she had in the industry, her agent, other people in the industry, and they all gaslighted her mm -hmm. and told her like, well, you know, we basically we don't care or we don't believe you. So she had no support within the adult industry because this was still in a time that women didn't speak out, mm -hmm. you know, because there was no OnlyFans, there was no personal Snapchat, there was no other way to make money except to be hired by directors and brands. And so if you went and you said thing, negative things about these people, then you weren't going to get hired anymore. So, you know, I think that that really, you know, that was obviously very upsetting for her and I can see why she would see the adult industry as a whole as like a terrible industry to be in. Like 20 years ago, young. it was like a bad pimp. She was yeah. 19, Yeah, you know? And I just feel like if we really want to cultivate a space that sex workers can feel safe and they can feel like they can have good experiences, then like we need to talk about the bad stuff too. Absolutely. I mean, I always like, 
you know, I've even been criticized that, oh, this podcast, all you do is talk about the good stuff in the industry. You ignore the bad stories. Like, which in a way, like, I understand, yes. Like, I generally tend to lean towards the positive because if you want negative stories about the adult industry, there's so much out there for you to, like, read and watch. Like, trust me, I don't need to cover those, that part, because that's well covered. covered. It's well covered. But I also, like, want to acknowledge that there are bad situations and that there are like these terrible events that occur so we can talk about it so that we can try to create a space that feels better and safer for people. And that's why Jesse has come back because mm-hmm. we are different as an industry. She can be independent. She has more agency over what she does for a living. She's also older. So like she's better at setting boundaries. Mm-hmm. So like, why can't she come back? It's like, there's that. I, in that's my opinion, such bullshit, you know? It makes complete sense to me why she would leave and why she would feel the way she felt. Absolutely. I, and us having people like that come back into our industry is kind of it, it's a wonderful look. It's yeah. wonderful for us. The fact that we are able to make somebody that was so jaded and had such a terrible experience within our industry come back and say, this is actually where I want to be because of the changes that you've made. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's us mate, taking a step in the right direction and being allowed to do that because we are treated like human beings that just do a job and we need to be able to talk about those things that aren't going well with our job. Right. That's it. Yeah. That's it. We're, it's what I hope to come from this entire conversation this time is I hope that with the passive income that we're able to have, with the ability to say things on social media, with everything – us being able to talk to directors and their lawyers and their legal team directly about what has happened to us on set in general and try to come to some situation that rectifies it. I hope that we will be able to have women that are able to say no and walk away comfortably. Mm-hmm. It's it's not the women's fault that they weren't they didn't feel comfortable and they weren't able to say no sometimes you might just be young sometimes it could be a lot of different things like you said she was younger she wasn't able to consent for herself we should be she looking after had those an people agent who was definitely not going to not up. looking out for them no. not saying hey this is on her nose don't even put that on the call sheet don't yeah. even ask her yeah. like we are to the point my agent rides for me she rides for me mm-hmm. for <laughs> It, there is, when I told her about what happened with the people that are on my no list, she put them on the no list for the whole agency for a whole year. Wow. And it's just what, it, I, I'm happy. I'm glad that she did. She waited till they made the changes that they need to, needed to make before she booked with them again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm really happy to be working with the people that are with me. But to be able to feel confident and say no and walk out before that even happens is a I think what is going to happen from this Mm -hmm. I think that that is a huge step that's going to be made and people I mean that's the only way that it's not going to happen for sure as if we I the only way that I know for sure that it won't happen to me is if I protect myself right I can't rely I I would like to be able to rely, rely on other people and I do have them to rely on realistically I am the one that needs to say no and I hope that this gives the women women in general what they feel or men you yeah. know men and women the ability to say no I'm not gonna do this yeah and if you're not gonna respect it the first time I'm sorry but your day's done like, yeah please find another person yeah hey guys if you want to support my show then you should think about joining my patreon at my patreon i offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support from live streams of my interviews as they are happening to bonus q a's behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots plus cool merch like stickers mugs and hoodies we have you covered so go to patreon.com slash holly randall unfiltered and while you're at it make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.